Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder All Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about our next tropical storm that's gonna be developing. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's get right to it. Uh, what we're looking at is the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, this area of disturbed weather down here in the Bay of Campeche, they have a 40% uh, chance for tropical storm development over the next several days. This area of interest has some showers and cloudiness around this morning down here in the Bay of Campeche. Uh, it's going to be slow to development, and it's, it's possible over the next several days uh, that it forms into a tropical depression uh, by the middle of next week, and this will actually move northward. But regardless of development, in the short term, it's going to be dropping flooding rains in much of Central America as well as southern Mexico. So let me get kind of give you an overview and expansion. You can definitely see uh, this morning we had a complex that formed over Kansas and Oklahoma, and that's some big time thunderstorms for them. And that actually kept intact and, and dropped some, uh, some strong thunderstorms this morning up here in uh, North Texas. You can see this uh, upper level low that dropped all the heavy rain over much of Mississippi and Arkansas into the Carolinas has finally moved offshore. So we can finally say goodbye to that system. Uh, out here into uh, the Barra Campeche, you can see this uh, overall disturbed weather that we've been watching over the last week, what they call Central America Gyra, has finally trying to get its act together. Uh, they did have a 40% chance down here in the, in the Pacific. Now that's actually crossed over into uh, the Atlantic side, and that's where that has that 40% chance for tropical storm development as we go through the next week. But let me also talk about the African dust. So it is pretty prevalent uh, this time of year. This is your NASA dust distinction and the optimal thickness of the dust. So a lot of times this time of year, we do have some what they call African dust, Saharan dust that comes off the, uh, the coast of uh, Africa, and it has to travel about 2,000 miles to make it towards the United States. You can see currently this morning on Saturday, June the 12th, yeah, we've got some pretty thick dust happening over much of the Caribbean into the D Dominican Republic, and especially over Jamaica this morning. So if you are, are you listening to me uh, from uh, Jamaica currently, let me know, leave your con comments down below. And it, I'd like to hear ground confirmation of you. If you see the, the sky that's a little hazy this morning, maybe you have some little dust that's over the, the, the cars and the, the, the stuff outside. So yeah, definitely leave your comments below. And I'd love to hear from you as well as the Cayman Islands. But yeah, this dust will eventually slowly lift uh, uh, further north as we go during time. But as it does that, it's gonna subside a little bit. Like I mentioned, it has to travel 2,000 miles. And a lot of this dust does get pulled up north into portions of Florida, but you can definitely see it's not nearly as thick as it's down here in the, in the Caribbean. And I don't think it actually makes it uh, to much of the US and into the Southeast, as it'll just kind of fade out over the long trajectory you know, over time. So, but yeah, let's take a look at the water temperatures. I mean, this water is plenty of warm down here in the Gulf uh, to support a tropical uh, system with temperatures uh, well into the 80s uh, for this time of year. So let me walk you through the overall water precipitation for currently right now. So you can definitely see these, you know, these lighter colors in yellow. Uh, that's your little bit lighter amounts, a little bit less precipitation. Uh, it's gonna be available in the atmosphere, that also is implying some of that African dust that it's mixing into that area. But you can definitely see by that model depiction, a lot of this dust doesn't actually conflict with the overall circulation down here in the Bay of Campeche because it never actually reaches it. And with this system expected to pull further north, a lot of the dust will be pulled into Florida. So I don't think the dust aspect alone will be a little bit... It won't even be much of an impact uh, from this particular system as the heavier rains today will be over much of the Yucatan into, into Cancun, into Cozumel, as this is slowly uh, developing. But as we go through to Monday, yeah, you can definitely see it's going to be slowly developing. It's kind of in a sweet spot down here, very warm temperatures. And I do feel over time that this is going to be developing. And yeah, look at the, some of the darker 
uh, blooms here, that's indicative of some very heavy rainfall and, a, and a more or less a developing type circulation as we get into the day on Monday. It's going to be slow to develop in the beginning because it's going to be trapped in between two high pressures. You can definitely see by Tuesday, the 15th, yeah, we've got a high pressure sneaking in uh, back behind into the Caribbean. That's going to help uh, push uh, this, kind of help nudge this uh, tropical type system as this high pressure over here in the southwest that was predominantly more over Texas is going to back away and back off. And that's going to allow and able to pull this system up northward and slow development will possibly be into a tropical type system uh, by then. So yeah, if you can take a look at the latest uh, EPS probability guidance as we go into Monday through Wednesday, the 16th, it's got a pretty high probability that this is going to be a tropical depression by then right around 80% of this uh, some sort of tropical type feature and if it does get named this will be tropical storm bill remember a tropical depression is 35 39 miles an hour once it hits 40 miles an hour that will be classified as tropical storm bill into uh, the gulf of mexico so as we walk through time as we get into the day on thursday i do feel once that high pressure backs off that'll allow this system to pull northward a lot of the guidance has a lot of this heavier precipitation over much over the central and western gulf of mexico by then this is the 17th of the month as we get into the middle of of next week and as we take a look at this 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 tr overall track kind of reminds me last year if you recall a uh, tropical storm cristobal this is a map last year back uh, june 5th in 2020 yeah, this area of interest had a, a situation where that, you know, Central America gyro was forming into the Eastern Pacific. We had a crossover event. We had a low level center that formed off the Yucatan and this actually pulled northward. It, all, it maxed out about 60 mile per hour winds. Uh, I think when it hit landfall down here in the uh, Grand Isles, it was about 50 mile per hour winds. Uh, but overall, this is kind of taking a similar aspect to what Tropical Storm Cristobal did just this time uh, last year. So trying to give you some uh, kind of a relevance to, uh, to this event you know, coming up. So here's the latest uh, EPS guidance over all the ensemble members, uh, what we're currently looking at for the European model between now and the 20th of the month, for, you know, just for the next eight days. A lot of the ensemble members pull this northward into much of Texas, into Louisiana, and much along the Gulf Coast. So, so you still have to be watching out for this particular event from uh, the Texas coastline to the For Florida Panhandle. But what's consistent with this particular system, and it looks like it's gonna be a kind of a sloppy system, and they're gonna be east side loaded. So it's gonna be heavily weighted on the right side. So a lot of the a lot of the wind, a lot of the you know heavier precipitation is going to be on the right side with this system. So depending on where it, 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 it traverses up and makes ultimately landfall, then if you're on that west side, you're not going to probably see much of anything uh, from from this particular system. So as we take a look at the latest uh, GFS model, kind of implies the same thing as most of the ensemble members guidance shifting a little bit further off to the east. So it has a lot of it shifting off into much of Louisiana, much of the Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Florida panhandle uh, coastline as we go through time. And as we take a look at over, the overall winds, like I mentioned, a lot of this is going to be an east weighted storm. I don't really think this gets to be a powerful storm or anything like that. This is mainly going to be a very heavy rainmaker. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely see some of the winds in the latest European model more in line of 40 to 50 mile per hour uh, wind gust. So yeah, I do feel like this is probably gonna be a low end tropical storm as it finally comes to fruition. Uh, but like I mentioned, the main impact from this particular system is going to be uh, just some heavier rainfall that's gonna be impacting the area as we go into late next week and especially uh, into late uh, into next weekend. Uh, the GFS model, the current GFS model is a little bit more bullish on this particular system, but it actually extends it a little bit further east. So that implies a little bit further into, say, New Orleans, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, along the coastline of, of, the, of, the, of the Florida uh, panhandle uh, could be impacted uh, from this system. If we break it down, these two particular models 
Here's the overall precipitation guidance where it feels like some of the heavier rains will finally fall as we get into Saturday and the Sunday time frame, June the 20th. Yeah, a lot of the heavier precipitation would push northward into Louisiana, right along the coastline here into uh, Mississippi and Alabama and the Florida Panhandle. We'll have to be on the, under the gun and look out for some of, the, some of that heavier rain. The GFS, yes, is a little bit tad bit stronger, is a little bit more bullish on the rainfall, but a lot of this keeps it uh, away from Texas and more or less puts it into, uh, you know, like I mentioned, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, into the Florida Panhandle. So if we take a look at some of the rainfall that could potentially lie, uh, this is an east weighted system. So on the back side, you've got sinking air. That's a lot of subsistence, and it's very difficult to rain in that in that type of environment as the winds get pushed down. So you know if this follows this trajectory, yeah, Texas might not see much of anything from this particular system. It's all going to be an east, an east side weighted system with a lot of the heavier rains pushing well into Louisiana, uh, you know, along the coastline here, Mississippi, Alabama, getting into the Florida panhandle. Uh, this will eventually shear off into the south uh, southeast. And yeah, the GFS is a little bit more bullish on a little bit stronger system. A little bit heavier rain amounts with this system. So every anybody that along the coastline, really from New Orleans to uh, along the coastline, Gulf Shores, Alabama, into the Florida Panhandle, Destin, all those areas look to be a little bit more susceptible to picking up some heavier rains uh, with this system as we go into uh, next weekend. So yeah, that is the latest update on a potential next tropical storm. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video definitely leave your comments below don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before end